Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson we are going to study the Pythagorean theorem. And this is the Pythagorean theorem. It looks pretty simple. It states that in a right triangle, like this, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared, a very famous theorem. And notice that in this right triangle, the side lengths are a, b and c, the c being the longest side, call, also called the hypotenuse. And then these two sides are not the longest sides, they are always at the right angle, a and b. And let's study now how we can use the theorem first, and then in the end I will prove it. Check if a triangle with side lengths 15, 18 and 12 units is a right triangle. You see, if it is a right triangle, then this holds. But if it is not a right triangle, then this will not be equal to c squared. Okay? So what I will do is I will write a squared plus b squared. And we're going to check if it's going to equal c squared. Okay? In this triangle 15, 18 and 12, what might be a, what might be b and what might be c? Now I told you c is always the longest side. So therefore 18 must be my c over here, 18 squared I write here, okay? And then a and b, it does not matter which one of these two you choose to be a or b. So let me see, I will write 15 squared plus 12 squared. Now you calculate this, you calculate that and check if those two sides are equal. And for 18 squared we will get 324. And for the other we will get 369. They are not equal. So a triangle with those side lengths is not a right triangle. Over here I have a right triangle and one side is unknown. That side length we don't know how long it is. We will use now the Pythagorean theorem to find the unknown side. And we will do the same for these two other triangles over there. Whenever you have a right triangle and you know two side lengths, and the third one is unknown, you can always solve that right triangle or solve the unknown side length using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, in this case, x is the longest side, the hypotenuse. Let me first write the Pythagorean theorem here. Now we figure out our ABC. C is the longest side, x, so I'll write x here. x squared, you must not forget the exponent, okay? A and B, I can choose this to be A or this to be A. It won't matter. So I can just put 3 squared plus 4 squared. And now I have an equation to solve. Okay. In it, X squared is already isolated on this side. It's alone on this side. So that makes it simple. All I do is now simplify here or calculate this. Now 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 it's 25. So I get 25 equals x squared. And you can probably see the solution to this one immediately. What number squared equals 25? x equals 5. If this was a more difficult number such as 26, we would need to take the square root of 26 using a calculator. So x here equals 5. Notice how easy these numbers are. 3, 4, 5. It's a very special triangle that people use a lot, for example, in construction. Over here, another triangle to solve. This time, the unknown side is not the hypotenuse. But it still works. Okay, let me write the Pythagorean theorem here. Let's figure out our A and B and C. Okay, C is the longest side. It's that one there, 26. A and B, again you can choose this to be A or B, it does not matter. Let me say this is A, let me say that way, and then it's 10 squared, and then B would be X, so I'll just put X squared. And now there I have, again, an equation to solve using normal methods for solving equations. I want to isolate X squared on one side. To do that, I need to subtract 10 squared which is 100. 10 squared is 100, right? So I need to subtract 100 from both sides. Let me write it here in my marginal notes. So subtract 100. So then x squared is alone on this side, and on the other side is 26 squared minus 100. 
And now we calculate this, 26 squared minus 100 using a calculator. And I did, and that is 576. Okay, x squared equals 576. At this point, then, we again use the calculator and take the square root of 576. Okay, x equals square root of 576, which is equals 24. Okay, you can see how my image is not to scale. If this is 24, 10, and 26, this should be looking so short. Okay, and then our last triangle for this lesson. Again, I'll start the same way. Let's first figure out the hypotenuse, the longest side. It's here, it is called C, so I will just have C squared. Then A and B will be those two numbers, 2.1 squared plus 3.4 squared. Don't forget that they are squared. Now a calculator to calculate all this. It will be 15.97 equals C squared. And don't make the mistake saying that C equals 15.97. That wouldn't even make sense. How would this be almost 16 units if these are that short? And then C equals square root of 15.97. And then you take that from the calculator and C equals about 3.996. Oh, 4.0 if we round it to one decimal digit like these ones. And now the proof. This is a very simple proof. There is no algebra involved, no calculations. It's a totally visual proof. First of all, I have my right triangle with the A, B, and C here four times. Here's one of them. A, B, and C, four triangles here. And then in the middle there is like an empty gap. It actually is a square here. Then I rearrange these pieces so that these four right triangles go here and here. Okay. Now, this is a big square, right? And here I have the same exact size square. Because in this big square, each side is A plus B long. A plus B, A plus B, A plus B, A plus B. Here is the same because this is B, isn't it? And then here is A, and this is a square here. I have A here, A here, B here, A, B, B, A. So I have the same size square, B, A, A, B. Each side is A plus B. And now we will compare those white areas. This white area, therefore, must equal these two white areas, right? Because there is the square, the big square, and then these four orange pieces. So the white pieces must equal, the, the areas must be equal. In this one, what is the area of this white piece? It is a square with side C. So the white area here is C times C, C squared. Now over here, what is the area of these white pieces? Here, the area of this square is, of course, A times A, A squared. And the area of this here is B times B, or B squared. So the white areas are A squared plus B squared. And that is the Pythagorean theorem. Now, one last little bit. You might wonder, how do we know that this here is a square in the middle? How do we know that these are right angles? Okay, that comes from the fact that when you have here a triangle, right triangle, and here you have a right triangle, look at this angle here and this angle here. And then this that I already marked to be a right angle with this purple little square. These three angles form a straight angle, 180 degrees. And this and this angle together must equal 90 because they come from this right triangle. It is here too. This and this angle are equal to 90 degrees because this is 90. And in a triangle, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. So this and this equals 90 together, so that one must be 92 to make a total of 180 over here. Okay, we are all done with this lesson and I hope it was helpful.